Assays aim to detect or quantify the presence of a particular molecular target, and that is done by measuring how a test molecule binds to it. There are many different types of assay. This presentation focuses on radioligand binding assays, but the principles described are equally applicable to immunoassays where an antibody binds to the protein of interest. In both cases, it is binding to the target or the specific binding that is of interest. But chemicals can interact in a less specific way with other sites present in the reaction mixture. That binding is known as non-specific binding. It is important to realise that the total amount of binding that's detected in an assay is the sum of the specific and the non-specific binding. So methods are needed to separate the specific binding from the non-specific binding. This diagram illustrates the binding sites on a cell membrane that are available to a ligand. By definition, ligands bind to receptors with high affinity. This means that they bind tightly, much tighter than to other sites in the cell. So they show specificity for the receptor. Ligand binding assays usually employ preparations that contain only one type of receptor to which the ligand binds with high affinity. The preparation will therefore contain a limited or a finite number of these receptors. Non-specific sites are any other site that the ligand can interact with. Since these sites lack the key structural requirements of the receptor for binding, the ligand will interact loosely with these sites. Low affinity binding can take place with a wide variety of molecules, so non-specific binding can involve many different sites, indicated here by different coloured diamonds. So we are now going to add a radio-labelled ligand, also known as a hot ligand. When added to a solution, ligand molecules move around randomly and continuously. As ligand molecules come into contact with the specific binding sites, they may interact and dwell there for a short time before leaving and moving around again. So ligand molecules constantly bind and unbind and move away again. Once the hot ligand has been added to the solution, the system gradually reaches equilibrium when the number of ligand molecules binding at any one time is equal to the number unbinding. Binding at equilibrium is described by the equation shown here, where L is the ligand, R is the receptor, and LR is the ligand receptor complex. K plus 1 and K minus 1 are the rate constants governing the binding reaction. The approach to equilibrium can be followed experimentally by stopping the assay at various intervals after adding the hot ligand and measuring the amount of radioactive ligand that has bound to the tissue or receptor sample at each time point. The results of such an experiment are then plotted. The time after adding the hot ligand is plotted on the x-axis and the radioactivity measured from the tissue containing the receptors is on the y-axis. The measurements made at each time are plotted individually. As more hot ligand binds to the receptors, the number of radioactive counts increases. This shows that over several minutes, binding gradually increases until it reaches a steady equilibrium. Now let's see what happens when you add more of the ligand, but this time we will add cold ligand. The cold ligand is exactly the same as the hot ligand, except that it doesn't have the radio label. In addition, we will add a lot more of the cold ligand than there is hot ligand. There's quite a lot going on here, so we will focus in on the receptors and ligands at the top of the cell. As with the hot ligand, the cold ligand molecules also move around constantly. When a cold ligand encounters an empty receptor, it will bind in the same way that the hot ligand does. And as hot ligands vacate receptors, their place can be taken by cold ligand. Importantly, because there is much more cold ligand than hot ligand, at equilibrium, 
most of the receptors will be occupied by the cold ligand. In other words, the hot ligand is displaced by excess cold ligand. So now let's look at other binding sites that ligands can interact with. Non-specific binding is low affinity. The ligand only binds loosely. But because they are low affinity, there are lots of these sites available. Until now, I've illustrated binding to receptors on a cell. But many binding experiments use homogenized tissues and membranes. So as well as binding sites on the extracellular surface of the membrane, there may be intracellular sites available. Incubations are carried out in solution in some kind of test tube or chamber, and there may even be non-specific sites on the surface of the container. The main thing to remember about non-specific sites is that there are lots of them, probably with many different structures. To make things clearer, I'm now going to remove the receptor sites from the diagram. Now we will add the hot ligand again. The ligand molecules move around and interact with non-specific sites as they encounter them, just in the same way as they interact with the specific sites, but this time they bind much more loosely. Let's see what happens this time when we add an excess of cold ligand. Hot and cold ligands move around and interact with the non-specific sites as they encounter them. But this time, there are enough sites for the cold ligand to occupy without having to compete with the hot ligand. So the hot ligand is not displaced. So we can repeat the binding experiment, this time in the presence of an excess of cold ligand to displace the specific binding of the hot ligand. In these conditions, the amount of radioactivity measured from the tissue at each time point represents the non-specific binding and is low in comparison to the total binding. The specific binding, or binding to the receptor, can then be calculated by subtracting the non-specific binding at each time point from the total binding. Binding experiments can be carried out using different concentrations of the hot ligand. The amount of specific binding or radioactivity measured at equilibrium is then recorded for each concentration of hot ligand and a binding curve constructed. According to the law of mass action, the rate of the binding reaction is proportional to the product of the concentrations of the receptor and the ligand. So as the concentration of ligand is increased, the equilibrium shifts to the right and more and more of the receptors are bound with ligand at any time. So when measurements of specific binding are plotted as a function of the concentration of the radio-labeled ligand, there is a hyperbolic increase in specific binding until the receptors are saturated and no more sites are available for binding. This is therefore known as a saturation plot. From this plot, you can obtain measurements of binding affinity. The relative rate constants governing the forward and backward reactions give this information. The ratio of K plus 1, or the forward reaction, over K minus 1 gives the association or affinity constant. But the inverse measure, K minus 1 over K plus 1, or the dissociation constant, is the more commonly used measurement. The dissociation constant can be easily measured from the saturation curve because it is equal to the ligand concentration at which half of the receptors, or the specific sites, are bound with ligand. This value can be obtained by drawing a horizontal line at 50% of the maximum specific binding, then reading off the ligand concentration at which that line meets the saturation curve. A low dissociation constant indicates that a low concentration of ligand is needed to bind 50% of the receptors. So a low dissociation constant therefore indicates high affinity. <laughs>